Let's go over some really important single strategies you can use to win a lot more matches. So first, let's watch this point in its entirety, and then we'll diagram it. Now, the point we're going to diagram here is going to be the number one player for USC versus the number one player for Ohio State. So we've got a first serve, and you'll notice with the first serve, the return is hit back down the middle. The uh, USC player served to the Ohio State player's backhand, and the Ohio State player hits the return back down the middle. I'm a big fan of this. Please, when your opponent has a strong serve, or whether it's first or second, and you're struggling with it, return back down the middle. Obviously, you want to hit it deep because if you hit it short, you know, in any situation you hit short, it's not good. But deep down the middle is a great way to neutralize, you know, your opponent's serve plus one attempt. So one thing you can do, whether you take lessons or whatever, maybe put some cones out. Uh, this is what I do with my students on court is I'll serve. And I'll serve to them, and they have to return strong first serves in between the cones. And if they return over here, it's my point. And if they return between the cones, it's their point. We'll play like a game to 11. But it's just training them to return down the middle. Now, if it's a weak second serve, you know, if your opponent hits this weak blue per second serve, and you want to come in and be aggressive and hit it more toward the, the sides because it's easier, then that's another story. But again, strong first serves return down the middle is a great idea. So here is a situation where you can actually absolutely copy this strategy where the opponent hits a high ball that lands pretty short. And I want you to notice what the USC player does. So Ohio State hits the ball high and the ball's going to land just past the service line. Watch how the USC player moves forward to take this ball on the rise. He's moving forward because he wants to keep the ball in his strike zone. He's moving forward to hit the ball while it's rising so that the ball doesn't get up too high. He doesn't want to play the ball around head level. He wants to play the ball in the strike zone. And the strike zone is, you know, be between basically your armpit and like your thigh. If you can play the ball in here as often as possible, that's a good thing. And by moving forward, he's getting the ball while it's rising through that strike zone before it gets too high. So that's something that you want to copy. When your opponent hits a higher, weaker ball, if you can move forward, then that's a great thing to take it on the rise. It does take early racket prep. It does take a little more skill to be be able to come forward and take this ball early. If you're not used to this, then what you might have to do is move back a little bit to let the ball fall more to your strike zone because you don't want to be playing the ball up above your head you know, as often as possible. That's why he's moving forward. He's moving forward to get this ball while it's rising. Now, when he does that, he finds himself inside the baseline. He moves forward, and then he goes, hey, I'm already inside. Let's go to the net. You'll notice with his approach shot, he hits the approach very low. You need to be practicing this. I have students who will hit approach shots, and the ball goes very high over the net, and then it lands out. And they'll say, oh, I hit it too hard. I'm like, no, 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 you didn't hit it too hard. You hit it too high over the net. So as you move forward, your ground stroke should be hit much lower over the net. And a benefit of hitting your approach shot low over the net Oh, you know, in addition to making sure that you don't hit the ball long is you also give your opponent a low ball to deal with. Remember, uh, I was talking about the strike zone and that the strike zone is like mid thigh to basically your armpit level, like anywhere in there is your strike zone where it's going to be much easier to hit by hitting the ball low over the net. It also gave his opponent a low ball. And now his opponent has to lift this ball up, so it's going to make it harder for the passing shot to occur. Now, we can see the USC player coming forward, and he's following his shot in, so he hit this approach shot cross-court. Not super hard cross-court, which is actually a good thing, because if you hit your approach shots too far to the side, it actually makes it easier for passing shots to occur. So by actually keeping the ball inside the court, believe it or not, it actually gives your opponent less angle to hit around you. It's called a safety post. So... He, he is coming forward, and you can see the split-step timing. Now, the split-step timing is you want to be in the air as your opponent makes contact. So you can see that. He's actually not landing his split-step as the opponent hits. He's landing the split-step after the opponent hits. And the reason, and I've talked about this many times, is since there's a delay in our reaction time, 
We want our brain recognizing where the ball is going, cross court, you know, uh, down the line, cross court, at our feet, right at our body, a lob over our head. We want to time and synchronize our head, recognizing where the ball is going with when our feet hit the ground. That's actually why the split step needs to be after the opponent hits the ball. And you'll see this with the pros in every situation. The pros land their split step and high-level players land the split step after contact is made. So film yourself and make sure you're doing that. Now, the Ohio State player ends up hitting the ball right at the volleyer, which is not a bad strategy. And you can see the USC player have to move out of the way of this ball. Now, when he moves out of the way, he is moving to the side. And when a ball comes at your body, it typically is a backhand volley that you want to hit because the arm across your body makes it easier to fit the racket uh, in between you and the ball. And so he's moving off to his right when he's doing this. Now, because he is moving off to his right, it probably isn't a good idea to hit this ball to the left because if he hits this ball to the left, then he's moving to the right. His opponent is moving this way. And now it's so much easier for the down the line passing shot to occur. Or if the USC player moves back over trying to bisect the cross court and down uh, the down the line and cross court pass, then the Ohio State player can hit behind him. So by moving over to his right, it's actually a really great strategy to volley that direction. So now what he has done is he has moved the volleyer to the same side where he's standing. Now he doesn't have to go anywhere. That's the beauty. If you cannot put a volley away, this is really important. If you cannot put your volley away, hit it to the same side you're on. Now you don't have to go anywhere. Because if he had hit over here, then he's got to move over quick in time. He doesn't get there. The down the line pass occurs. And especially if he's moving over here quickly, then the lob can go over his head. There's just a lot of things that can go wrong if he volleys into what appears to be the open court. So now he has moved his opponent onto the same side. Now, I want you to notice something really important here. His volley was deep. And because the volley was deep, I want you to notice the Ohio State player have to move back. And he's off balance. Look at his like his front leg crossing. Like it's just an uncomfortable situation. So what can the USC player expect? He can expect a lob. What you want to do is empathize. Put yourself in your opponent's shoes. It's the best way to anticipate. Just put yourself in your opponent's shoes and say, what shot would I go for in that situation? And he is actually the... USC player is assuming that a lob is going to occur. And I want you to notice a subtle little move that the USC player makes. The USC player starts to move backward. Watch how he starts moving back. See that? Watch this again. He starts moving backward and he starts moving back before the ball is ever hit. You can see he's moving back. Watch this again. He's moving back before the ball is ever hit because he's assuming and, and he's thinking, hey, when I'm in that situation, I lob. So when you hit a nice deep volley that pushes your opponent back, you don't want to get super tight to the net because that's what Vic Braden called rushing the net to lose at a faster rate. You're just getting tight to the net to make it easier for their attempted lob to go over your head. So he actually backs up so that he can get that lob. Now, it was not a good lob, but I'm not here to, I'm like, there's no way I'm going to be able to beat that player. I'm not telling you that I could do a better lob. But, you know, all players, even the pros, you know, pros lose matches, which means they miss shots and they don't hit the shots they want. So he does not hit the type of lob that he wanted. But notice he did lob it to the opponent's backhand. Now, he was trying to hit this ball way over his head, obviously. He wasn't trying to give him just this high pop-up. Now, here's the cool thing. When you have a high pop-up, especially if you're a two-hander, if you're a two-hander, this shot is actually quite easy. You can take a swinging topspin dry volley, and that's what he does here. And he actually pulls this ball cross-court, knowing that the opponent is going to have to recover back to the middle, and he actually wrong-foots him for the winner.
Now, if you'd love to use the same strategies the pros use to win their matches, then you got to pick up the Singles Playbook by Fuzzy Yellow Balls. It's all broken down by the type of opponent you play against, and it's over 50 pages, strategy after strategy, and what's really cool is each page comes with a QR code, so you can watch a video of exactly how to use each strategy. Just use my link in the description and pinned in the first comment. And if you're looking for new people in your local area to play against, practice with, or even find a coach who's close to you who's going to help you with your game, then use my link in the description, playyourcourt.com slash two-minute tennis to get 50% off. So use these single strategies in your next match, and there's no doubt you're going to gain confidence, win more matches, and play much better tennis. This is Ryan Reedy from 2minutetennis.net. You got this.